Alright guys, how's it going? Here I am back with another tutorial, this week carrying on the platforming theme again with uh, jump through platforms, another topic that's been frequently requested. So the simple idea is we're going to have these platforms in the game that you can jump through from underneath but land on top of, just like that. And as you can see they're working here, and uh, I'll show you how I set this up. So as usual with the platforming series, there will be a link in the description of the video where you can download this whole project if you want to just leap into the code. It's got all of the stuff from um, previous platforming tutorials in it. It's got uh, slopes, it's got ladders and signposts and you know all that stuff. Um, but in order to understand what's going on here and understand um, this code and this tutorial, um, I highly recommend you've watched the in-depth platformer tutorial um, that I did a very long time ago. and. Um, understand the fundamentals of that kind of code. So, assuming you're okay with all that stuff, we can get in there and start to explain how these platforms work. So, in terms of uh, new resources that we've added, all I've added here is SPR underscore platform, which is just a sprite for our platforms, just a, a simple uh, little 32 by 16 sprite with its origin dead in the center. And you can see them spread out from around in this level. And that's what we're, well, we're just going to use for our, uh, our platforms. And then I've made a new object called object underscore jump through, which is just what we're going to use for our jump through platforms. Um, I've made it another child of parent underscore wall, parent underscore wall, um, which is the same thing that we've been using for our, our wall objects and uh, our slope objects. So something, you know, just to tell the player that it's collidable. Now, because we're not going to collide with platforms in exactly the same way, that uh, we collide with um, like regular walls and stuff like that. We only want to collide with these from the top, like if we're moving down and we, we touch them from the top, that's the only way we want to collide with them. Otherwise we want to be able to just move through them pretty freely. So in here what I've done is I've added a create event that says um, uh, type equals two. Um, just to, so that this object has something that can distinguish it from the other types of collidable um, uh, collidable children of parent underscore wall. Um, now this has type uh, equals two, so you know where does type one come from? Well, I basically I went into pair part underscore wall and added the same create event uh, with type equals one. And now generally every child of this object will inherit that same create event if it doesn't already have one. So if we go into object wall, it doesn't have a create event, and the same in slope doesn't have a create event. So, but these are both children of par underscore wall. So when these objects um, are created in the room, uh, they will get they will inherit that create event and do type equals one. However, when object jump through is in the room, it has its own create event. So um, it'll just run its create event and it'll ignore the create event that its uh, its parent has. Another option you do have when talking about parenting in general is if you want to add some stuff, like you say if you still wanted to run the um, the parent code of uh, whatever it was, but you wanted to add some stuff to the create event, so you wanted to run the create event of your parent and the stuff from object underscore, uh, from this current object, uh, there is actually a drag and drop action that will let you do this um, here in the control tab called call event. So if you drag this in here, it says call the inherited event, and you can order that however you want. So you could do some stuff before your inherited code, you can do some stuff after your inherited code, and so on and so forth. It's very flexible. So with the resources that we've added to the game covered, let's look at what we've had to change code-wise in order to get jump through platforms to work. So if we step into the step event of our player object, basically what I've had to do is kind of rewrite the... Um, start of our collision code for horizontal collision and vertical collision just to take into account the new system we have for um, checking to see what type of object we're colliding with as opposed to just saying are we colliding with a generic wall because now instead of using place meeting um, what we would like for horizontal collision what we would normally have in, in this like five lines of code here is just one if statement that said uh, if place meeting x plus h speed um, and y is like parent wall. So you know, if uh, the place we're about to move to horizontally is a wall, any any wall, and that was basically the code. But now we need to know what that wall specifically is. And when you do that, um, the easiest way to do that is to set up a variable here that I've done with var uh, h collide. 
setting up this uh, variable using var just makes it temporary, so it's only used for like this um, this particular step, um, and afterwards it'll reset to like zero, and it won't be like used for um, like later stuff. So um, h collide equals instance underscore place x plus husper uh, y par underscore wall. And now what that does is it finds it checks this area just like place meeting does. It checks this position to see if, um, if there's a collision with uh, parent underscore wall. And if there is, it puts that that object that you've collid coll <laughs> collided with. Uh, it takes its instance ID and puts it into this variable. So now we can refer to the object that we were about to collide with, with hcollide. And so now insta we just have to check if hcollide does not equal no one. There's a special object that just um, basically means if it doesn't have any object ID in it. Um, so if it's not equal no one, then it means you're not equal someone. <laughs> and surprisingly, it means it has an object ID in it. And if it has an object ID in it, that means this has come back true, and it's it's given as an ID of something that we're about to collide with. Therefore, we're about to collide, and we're back to what we we had before with um, if place meeting. So once we have that, we can look in here to say if h collide dot type equals equals one then we know that we're about to collide with a wall or a slope and not a jump through platform because our jump through platforms will have type set to 2 and um, all of our other kinds of wall have type set to 1 which is how we set up with our inheritance and our, our parent objects earlier so all of that there is basically just making sure that we're colliding with, we're about to collide with a wall, just as we did before with place meeting. Only now we're accounting for the possibility that um, we could be about to collide with a moving platform, and so we, we've done this to discount that possibility because we don't want to be able to horizontally collide with a moving platform. And then after we've done that, we basically just do the exact same stuff we usually do in our uh, horizontal collision. So this is all the same code from the slopes tutorial, using y plus and all of that to make sure that we collide properly horizontally, and otherwise everything there is exactly the same. So in vertical collision, we've done the exact same setup again up here with uh, var v collide, v collide equal instance place x, y plus uh, vspa. So you know if we're about to collide vertically, and if v collide does not equal nobody, so the object we're about to collide with, you know, exists, it is it is someone, then we go on to check what type of object it is. If it's, it's type equals one, meaning it's a slope or a normal wall object, then we do our regular uh, vertical collision code, which is, you know, we move towards the object one pixel of frame. Uh, when we reach the object, um, we set our speed to zero, and we set our grounded to true. Uh, but then we add in this extra possibility for if um, v collides type equals 2. So if we're about to vertically collide with a jump through platform, and not only are we about to collide with a jump through platform, but the sign of our VSP, our, our vertical speed, is equal to 1, which means we're moving downwards. Because um, like a positive v speed means we're moving downwards, and a negative v speed means we're moving upwards. So if the sign of VSP equals 1, then we're moving down. If it's minus 1, it means we're moving up. So um, then once we know that we're about to collide with a moving platform and we're moving downwards, we're going to check to see if we're already colliding with something. Because the way our collision code works, we never actually collide with anything. We never actually spend a frame inside of things. We always check to see if we're about to collide, and then we move ourselves as close as possible and don't. So if we're already colliding with something, it must mean we're inside a moving platform already, which means we a moving platform, a jump through platform, sorry. It must mean we're inside a jump through platform already, meaning we've either jumped up into it or we've jumped into it and have started to fall down through it, or you know, we fall fell through its side or some you know, some circumstance that allowed this to be true and yet, you know, we haven't, you know, stopped moving. So we're 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 inside the moving platform the jump through platform somehow. I keep saying moving platform. So, if we are inside that, then we don't do any of this, so we allow you to fall through um, 
the uh, the jump through platform and allow you to move up through the jump through platform and to not quite get on top of it. So we have to be like fully clear of the jump through platform in order to land on top of it. And then, okay, so if that's not true, so it, that means we're not colliding with anything currently, we're moving downwards and uh, we're about to collide with a uh, jump through platform. That's what all of this has led us to conclude, right? Those things must be true in order for us to be here. So if those things are true, that's the only time where we want to run the code to make us land on and be able to walk on this jump through platform. It's the only condition we want to be falling from above and um, we want to not currently be colliding with anything. So at that point, we just do the exact same thing that we do when we normally collide with the ground. We do while place, uh, while not place meeting x y plus sine vespa par underscore wall y plus equal one. We don't have to use y plus equal sine vespa here, just because we're we're definitely moving down at this point. We already know we're moving down because otherwise sine vespa wouldn't have equaled one in the first place. So we move down one pixel of frame until we reach that uh, jump through platform. We set our vertical speed to zero. We set ground up to one just as we did before. And, I mean, I demonstrated it at the beginning, but I'll just demonstrate it now. As we can see, everything works as expected. We jump through the platform, we land on top of it, and if you like, you come off of the side of the platform and move down through it, you'll notice you, know, you, you fall through it just fine. If I jump off of this slope here, uh, see if I touch the moving uh, jump through platform from underneath, I don't land on it. It's only if I get on top of the jump through platform do I land, do, am I actually able to land on the platform, which is what we want. I mean, uh, one little glitch with the the way I've set this up, that, um, I mean, it's not a problem, it's only like a consequence of bad level design anyway, is don't put two of these like so close to each other like this, um, because you'll notice that if I jump on top of here and I like fall through it like that, you'll see how I fell through both, both of those. Um, because these platforms are so close together, they're so close that the character um, can be touching both of them at once, like vertically. And if he's touching both of them at once, if you think about how our code currently works, um, you have to not already be colliding with um, par underscore wall in order to land on a moving platform. So because we're already inside this platform, it won't let us land on this platform underneath. Um, there are a few changes you could make to the way the code works in order to fix that, but really there's no good reason you would ever want to have two of these that close together that I can think of anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just like the one little exception with this. Um, just be careful about putting them really, really close together vertically like that. Just leave them spaced apart so that, like, um, they're, um, at least, at least the height of your character apart, because, like, then there's no way for him to be able to be touching both of them at once, and you should be set. So yeah, that's the basics of how to set up jump through platforms. I hope you guys enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful, and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers guys!